Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Nate Orem coming to you from Lake Norman, North Carolina, and will be a guest presenter at the uh, boot camp in March. Nate, I I reached out to you because not just are you East Coast local and a brother in the Delta Sigma Chi, shout out to the Delta, but you approach upper cervical from a unique way. You had some unique training, but one of the things that you do, I think really well that a lot of people miss is you're actually taking the time to look at someone's posture. And can you explain in a minute, like from a technical standpoint, why you do that? I guess in order to talk about that, we can talk about, you know, what is, you know, what is pattern analysis, right? What does that Ooh. mean? Wait, what? Yeah. And not related. It's, it's so often overlooked as such, but you know, to talk about pattern analysis, right? We have to say that it's objectively measuring the effects of subluxation on the body. If we're looking at it from a, you know, a thermographic standpoint, which is very common in the upper cervical world, or, the, you know, we can look at it at a posture standpoint too. We have to ask ourselves, why can we have a scan, know if somebody is in or out of alignment and utilize the same listing every time does someone need really expensive multiple thousands of dollars tens of thousands of dollars to analyze posture do we need a fancy app do we need one of those nuca anatometers like when i first graduated my cousin went to a chiropractor who was trained in one of the orthogonal upper cervical techniques and she came to me and said i walked in the door the doctor looked at me and said yeah you need to be adjusted today and i thought bull crap you're telling me it's not exactly bull crap no no because our posture, right, it's it's an automated system of the body, right? We were designed to be plumb and level to gravity, and right? that's, that's our normal. And then abnormal is anything outside of that. However, what we know is when the misalignment portion of the subluxation is present, it puts a unique pressure on the brainstem, and it's the same every time. And that pressure causes you to stand crooked the same way every single time. So by establishing, before the very first adjustment, by establishing that partial distortion pattern on subsequent visits, you can measure and say, yep, you're standing crooked in that same way. That's how I know you need an adjustment. Right. So, powerful. so there's absolutely a, a pattern component of posture. It's, it's not just straight or crooked. It's how do they stand crooked, right? Yeah. So as far as your question is, as far as equipment goes, the better tools you have to measure, right? The more specific, the more um, accurate and congruent we can be with with what we do because, you know, upper, upper cervical work is highly specific, but the more confident you can have, or you can be rather, um, the better. So. I have an atometer that I use. So with that, we're measuring things in the frontal plane, measuring hip unleveling, uh, pelvic translation, as well as upper body lean. And you can get them with, you know, weight differential scales, you know, bilateral scales, measure left and right, as well as, as far as posture goes, we also utilize, you know, uh, leg checks. So I have a yeah. leg check bench. So at the boot camp, considering most most people looking into upper cervical, I don't even know if you can get an anatometer manufactured anymore. And I know there's a lot of like tools that people can use. So at the boot camp in March, will you be showing folks how to analyze posture just straight from the get? Are there are there things that we can do? on Monday, so to speak, with a patient walking in the door to be able to accurately kind of assess their postural distortions or postural pattern, as you would say. Yep, absolutely. We're gonna look at just raw posture and try to yeah. train people, try to train these students and these doctors eye to look for these subtleties on that may be harder to see without things to be measured and to yeah. measure against like a, like a postural grid, right? that gives you a reference point. Again, the, the more tools you have, the easier it gets. But it is it is something that absolutely is is a take home for Monday morning. And I'm very excited that they go over that because it's, it's a big deal. And not only um, are we looking at just the objectivity of it, but we can relate postural patterns to patient symptomatology, right? Because more often than not, certain certain postural patterns present uh, symptoms, right? And when we can 
when we can tell that and communicate that with a patient, right, we're establishing that that rapport through empathy, right, and understanding what they're going through. And I think that just not that not that we want to focus on on symptoms at all, right? We're at Sherman College mm -hmm. chiropractic, right? <laughs> But uh, but just to be able to establish that rapport, just building that trust in that doctor-patient relationship creates, in my opinion, it creates better outcomes long term because that patient will trust you, will follow your uh, care recommendations going forward. That's powerful, man. Establishing rapport through empathy. That should be uh, a bumper sticker on any communication education system. That's powerful, powerful stuff. I remember... I remember having that conversation with uh, Dr. Matthew McNally, and he said he would analyze someone's posture and then tell them what they had. And I was so foreign to me. It was like heresy. Like you can't, what are you even <laughs> talking about? You know what I mean? And then all these conversations also remind me of, of a good friend and mentor, Jeff Scholten, who once said to a room full of chiropractic students and doctors, he goes, he, I can't remember what exactly, what subluxation assessment he was referring to, but he said, you don't know because you don't look. Like, but if we were to look at these things, there's a whole other side or component of the subluxation pattern that we can ascertain. And that can help us, what I'm, if I'm hearing you correctly, that can help us not only be more consistent in our delivery of chiropractic, but it can also help us to relate on an emp empathetic level with our patients, which is huge for compliance, oh, yeah. retention, and ultimately results. All right, Nate, so the boot camp is March 24 to 26. And any last words for the folks planning on coming? What are you looking forward to the most? I'm looking forward to just, you know, dropping something that is most often overlooked and just giving an opportunity to to utilize something literally that they can take home, use Monday morning to better take care of patients.